Good evening, everyone. We'd like to welcome you to the beautiful Garnus Martin Field for this week's showdown between the Bartstown Tigers and East Jessamine High School. Thank you for joining us. This is Lance Blanford here once again with student intern TJ Carr. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the game. And we are about a little under 10 minutes from getting this game underway. And it's a big one, folks. Win tonight, perfect regular season. And not only that, it is the final home game of the regular season, meaning senior night. That's right. We just uh, – Watched uh, many seniors, both uh, from the football team and the band and the cheerleaders, make their way across the field with their parents. Always a special night here at Gardner Spartan Field, huh, TJ? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. So, Barstown is a perfect 9 0 on the season, and East Jessamine High School is 1 7. Tough year for them. Let's just say they're living up to the Jacksonville logo right now. Great point, great point. Uh, of course, you never take any team for granted, so we're going to see what tonight brings. Folks, we'll be right back with you to get things underway here at Garner Smart Field right at about eight minutes. Thank you for joining us.
All right, we're ready to get this thing kicked off here at Gardner's Martin. East Chessman is taking the field. Your Bartstown Tigers are getting ready to storm out between their sign as they do every single week. And here comes your Bartstown Tigers. Ready to take on once again to complete this perfect 10-0 regular season as they make their way into the playoffs. Once again, main, wanting to maintain that home field advantage for as long as they possibly can through the playoffs. A big game tonight. You want to end this year, this regular season, on a real positive note. We've got an East Jessamine team that's coming in here, one and seven. Uh, a team that, with a record like that, could be easily overlooked. But heading into the playoffs, you always want to build momentum up, right? And, yeah, I agree. Uh, they want to continue on to make sure that uh, they're going into the playoffs ready and uh, not only motivated, but they also want to make sure that uh, they avoid any major injuries and all of that. But definitely the energy, you want the energy live tonight, right? So they're heading into the playoffs ready and raring to go. Yeah, the main thing I can see is they want to keep that uh, hot streak they've had going. They want to keep up the flow. They – one bad loss here that could derail the whole playoffs. They've already got that one seed locked down, but you never know what can happen on any given Friday. Fighting for uh, many ha many rankings have the Barstow Tigers at that number one slot. Of course, RPI is a little bit different, and RPI is what determines on how many games you can have in a home field advantage. Uh, still fighting for that, hoping that uh, after tonight uh, we'll be able to extend that home field advantage. But uh, regardless, we know we have a couple of games here at home. Really hoping for that regional championship, though, uh, to be played here at Garnus Martin Field. Um, all right, Zebras are out in the middle of the field. They're going to talk things over. We're going to get a coin toss, and we're going to get this game underway. And it looks as if Barchtown won the toss and deferred to the second half. East Jessamine will receive the football. And once again, we it looks like we've got number eight, T.J. Greenwell, going to do his infamous watermelon kick to get this game underway. Unorthodox style, but so far it's worked out for the Tigers. Absolutely, absolutely. A little chilly here tonight, but good football weather. The Tigers are going to need to get that first hit out and get the butterflies out of them, you know. And the whistle blows, and they're about to do just that. Greenwell kicks it off. Squibble kick down to about the 25-yard line, picked up. Run right up the middle and hit about at the 30-yard line where the Barstow Tigers drop them, and that is where the Tiger defense will take the field. A couple of stats just running through for Bartstown versus their opponents. First downs, 115 first downs to 121. Rushing attempts, 187 Bartstown attempts to their opponents, 341. Yards gained, 1,889, and their opponents, 1,997. We'll give you more stats here in just a little bit. Outscoring their opponents, though, 368 to 174. And here we go. Tigers take the field. It's a high snap out of the shotgun. The quarterback takes the draw right up the middle. Tigers hit him early and drop him four of, after just a one-yard gain. A short gain. Peyton Stone and Kyan Lee in there for the Tigers. One yard, second and nine. Here comes the East Jessman offense getting set. Quarterback in the shotgun. Running back to the right-hand side of him. He hands it to number seven. Number seven looks for an opening. Doesn't find one before he's hit by many Barchtown Tigers leading the way. It looked like 
Number 62, Bryson Kroom on the tackle. Yeah, the senior making an impact his last game already. Such an emotional time, you know, whether or not, uh, you know, you know you got playoffs, but it's the last regular season game, senior night, got to go out. With yeah, this this is your last really guaranteed game. Here we go. East Jessman rolls right. It's going to pass, and it's picked off. Number seven, Tyleek Williams picks it off and returns it down to the Tiger 35. And early, they start just like they did last week with a turnover. First down, Tigers. And Ty Ty Williams keeping that hot streak from last week going. I mean, he had a hell of a game last week, and now <laughs> seems to keep it rolling here tonight. And absolutely, that's a way to say it. And he had, uh, I think he had four touchdowns, maybe five touchdowns. He had four touchdowns, four yes. Touchdowns. You are correct in that. Tiger offense takes the field. We've got Trips right. Brady Clark, of course, coach's son, uh, senior, out of the shotgun. Tyleek Williams just picked off the interception. In the backfield. Swing pass out right to TJ Greenwell. And TJ is going to pick up about four yards on the play. It'll set up a second and six now. Going to be second and six. Brady out of the shotgun, hands the ball off, and he is hit immediately by a defensive lineman from East Jessamine. Not sure how he got through, TJ, but it looked like he came completely unblocked. Uh, looked like a missed assignment by the Tigers there. And that happens sometimes, but hey, as long as you can make up for it on the remaining plays, everything will be a okay. So the tackle for the loss puts the Bardstown Tigers at a third and long here, about a third and 11 or a long 10, call it. Yeah, but knowing this Tiger offense, they easily can get this done. So it'll be interesting to see what Coach Clark can draw up on this play. Let's see if he tries to get it all or just wants to get a little bit and go for it on fourth down in fourth down territory. Trips left. Brady Clark throws the ball out left, and it is incomplete. Hit Shannon Tongue, baby Shannon Tongue, right in the hands, and he drops it. Drops aren't something that is uh, very common for for baby Shannon Tongue. Here we go, fourth down and long. Trips right, one left. Shannon Tongue out left. Tyleek Williams in the backfield. Clark drops back. He throws it right past the marker, and it, and it is, is complete. complete. Wow, what a play. And that is complete to the other Clark, Braden Clark. And yeah, that Clark connection has been deadly for the Tigers this whole year. It absolutely has. Braden Clark, the junior. Junior playing like a senior out there. That experience. First and 10 for the Tigers. Once again, Clark as most of the time he is, out of the shotgun. Throws on a quick out. Braden Clark didn't get his head around and the ball was already zooming past him. That'll be second to 10. And Brady Clark hands the ball off to Ty Ty Williams. He runs off tackle for a very short game, maybe a yard. Any, any progress helps out the cause, so <laughs> take what we can get. It's going to be third down and long. Uh, early on, the offense, Tiger offense, uh, doesn't seem to be getting a lot, uh, especially on the ground, against this East Jessamine defense. Yeah, it looks like they haven't been studying the tapes on the Tigers so far. Motion left, swing pass to the left. It's complete to Ty Ty Williams. He makes a good move, and he is going to be pushed out of bounds about the 10-yard line, and it's going to be good enough for a first down, Tigers. Ty 
Tyleek Williams with a lot of speed around that corner. Almost got in the end zone there. Breaks one tackle. He's in. Clark under center. Pitch right. And it is a sweep. And number 27 runs it into the end zone. Number 27, Cam Shoemaker. Number 27, Cam Shoemaker with the touchdown. Wonderful play. Great young run from that young man. Absolutely beautiful rush right there. Beautifully designed as well as the Tigers able to strike first and hopefully strike hard as that'll be a 6-0 lead. And I believe this is Cam Shoemaker's first game back after injury. Um, that you would. I remember seeing him around in that leg brace. Yeah, and, and first touch he gets. It, it's a touchdown. And what better way to do so uh, on senior night for the senior Cam Shoemaker. And Tigers will go for two. And they'll hand the ball off, and it looks like that they will be stopped short. Let's see what the official role is. Yes, they will be stopped short. All right, and now the score is six to zero. Your Barstown Tigers with a little bit under eight minutes to go in the first quarter. We'll break for just a moment. This break is going to be come to you from Kentucky Choice Realty and Realtor Mr. Bray. Uh, Kentucky Choice Realty is a proud sponsor of our uh, Century Club. For more information about the Century Club and how to support your Barstown Tiger football team, please contact Coach Clark. We'll be right back. And here we go. The Tigers kick the football off. And it's fielded at about the 20-yard line, and he is hit immediately by the Tiger coverage team. Once again, Tyleek Williams making another play. His name is said early and often. It's time to see what that East Jessman offense can do. Out of the shotgun, quarterback fakes the sweep and keeps it, and he is hit immediately by number. Let's see. That is number 33, Kyan Lydian, the senior. Bringing up second and nine now for the generals. Generals come out with two left, one in the backfield with, with the quarterback in the shotgun. One right, quarterback rolls to the left, looking, looking. Looks like he wants to run, and he's going to keep it, and he's going to pick up about four or five yards on the play and make for a manageable third down in short here. That was a good job by the Tigers to force that throw from the Jaguars into a run. Well, that could have caused some damage if that was a throw. You know, early on, it looks like that quarterback, as he's trying to to roll out, it doesn't look like he is really wanting to throw the football, TJ. It looks like uh, uh, he, he's really looking for an opportunity to see what he can pick up on his feet. Yeah, he's really looking for anything right now at this moment. All right, we've got one left, one right, and it's a – Direct snap to the halfback, number seven, and he finds some room around the left-hand side. It's a first down and more out to about the 44, 43-yard line. They're going to mark him out. Uh, good enough for a general's first down. And that tricky jet sweep can catch you off guard at really any time. They caught the Tigers off guard right there. Wow. 
no rush to this general's offense. They're taking their time. Two left, one right, out of the shotgun once again. Hands the ball off to the right-hand side, number seven. And the flag comes down. And number seven is tackled at the 50-yard line, but it looks like it's going to come back as they indicate it is a holding against the Generals. That hold against the Jaguars will really hold them back here. I keep on saying the Generals. It's the Jaguars, isn't it? Yes, they I'm are not. the Jaguars. <laughs> Says the logo at the bottom of the screen. Not sure where I got generals from. <laughs> we do have Thomas Nelson in the first round of the playoffs next week, <laughs> yeah. so that might be on your mind. Yeah, that's that really what's on everyone's mind here at the stadium. The playoffs, the playoffs, the playoffs. Great point. Maybe a little Freudian slip there. <laughs> And the Jaguars come out, one left, one right, quarterback out of the shotgun again. And it's a fake, and it's a pitch up to the middle, but not before the Tigers tackle him for a loss. They never got him down, but they blow the play dead for um, about a three-yard loss, it looks like. Set up second down now is huge momentum shift there. Sparkstown able to stop the run right in its tracks. Second and approximately 20 now. Not a position that the Jaguars offense wants to get in as they've had the most success out of the run early on. And he fakes the handoff. Looking, looking, have plenty of time. Great throw. Just wasn't able to be reeled in by the wide receiver, number 39, along the sideline here. Decent coverage by the Tigers, but a really nice throw that really should have been caught. Yeah, it was a beautiful throw. I mean, one of the better ones I've seen all season by an opposing player. Threw it right there at the sideline where only his player could get it. He just couldn't reel it in. So now we've got third and long. Let's see what they draw up here. They'll try to go for it. Uh, definitely probably thinking about that last drive and the interception. I would definitely be thinking about that huge pickup earlier. I mean, proving that you can do it. It's just this defense, they've been locking them down so good. I don't know about that. It's going to be a timeout on the field. I'm sorry, it is a penalty. And it's going to be delay of game against East Jessamine. So that's going to push him back even farther now. That'll be what, about a five, ten yard penalty? It's a five yard penalty, and it's going to be third and 25-ish. 25, 25 the rut for East Jessamine just keeps getting bigger and bigger right here. And now a timeout called on the play by East Jessamine. And now it is a timeout called by the East Jessamine Jaguars. This timeout is going to be brought to you by one of our other Century Club sponsors. It's going to be Wilson & Muir Bank & Trust Company. Once again, a proud sponsor of the Bargetown Century Club. Wilson & Muir Bank for all your banking needs. Go down and see my good buddy Drew Ballard and others at Wilson & Muir. Here at Gardner's Martin, it's not only senior night, it's trivia night. As Mr. Jason Floyd is handing out trivia to the folks in the audience and whoever answers it gets a, not a miniature candy bar, but a, a full candy bar. Yeah, 
I wish I could play. <laughs> and we're back to the action. The quarterback backs up, doesn't see anything, gets pressure early, and tries to run the football, and just manages to get a couple yards. It's not nearly going to be enough, though, I can tell you that. And it's going to be fourth down, and the Jaguars punt team takes the field. Here we go. Good snap. Really good punt. Caught by Ty Ty Williams, and he does the reverse to TJ Greenwell. Stiff arm, just enough to not get tackled and pick up about five yards after the catch. And he's pushed out of the bounds at about the 35 yard line, and that's where the Tiger offense will take the field. And here we go, it's a handoff around the right-hand side to T.J. Greenwell, number eight. And a flag comes down, and you know if it's a flag in the backfield that early, usually it's a hold, and that is exactly what they call holding on the Tigers. Man, once again, the penalty striking the Tigers hard and striking them early. That's been a common factor for the Tigers this whole season, really. They've had a great year, but those penalties have been coming back to bite them. Always something that by the end of the year, you want to make sure you get cleaned up, uh, especially as you approach the playoffs. It could be a matter of obviously a, a, a close win or a close loss. Here we go. Brady Clark out of the shotgun. Swing pass to the left to Ty Ty Williams. And he is hit pretty much immediately by number 23 for the Jaguars. And he is tackled for a short gain. Again, TJ, this Bartstown, this potent Bartstown. Offense not really getting a lot early uh, from either the pass or the run game. Uh, they do lead six to zero, uh, but based on their performance in the past and all year long, um, not really clicking early on here. Let's see if they can get it going. This is easily a team that can get it going. Just depends on the moment for them. Brady Clark out of the shotgun, fakes the jet sweep, and he's looking for a little screen pass, an excellent catch, one-handed catch by T.J. Greenwell, and he gets up the field and gets enough, and he seems to just trip and fall down after a gain of about 10. He'll make it a much more manageable third and nine or so, but it looked like the turf monster got him there. He just fell down. No one touched him. Happens, from, happens sometimes. I mean, I've played outfield in baseball. I know how bad that turf can be. So once again, a much more manageable third down and nine here. Brady out of the shotgun. Drops back, looking, looking, across the middle. Perfect throw, hit TJ Greenwell right in the hands, but he was unable to hold on. It was going to be close oh, to the first flag. down. But we do have a flag on the play. And I'm getting reports that it's an unsportsmanlike conduct. And it's an unsportsmanlike conduct. You are correct. A 15-yard penalty and – Correct me if I'm wrong, but that will be an automatic first for the Tigers. On, a, them beyond th them. on a third down, the, the, the uh, Bardstown offense was going to have to punt the ball away. Automatic first down. And if you're a 1-7 East Jessman against a 9-0 Tiger team, you can't have that. Yeah, I guarantee 
Coach is going to have a few choice words for that defense whenever they get back on the sideline. Here we go, two left, two right. Clark going to throw it out to his trustworthy Braden Clark, number 11. Four gain for about eight, seven or eight on the play. That will be seven as that will set up a second and three, it appears. Brady, again, out of the shotgun, completes it out to the left. Oh, and a tongue spin catches move. the ball. A couple of great moves bouncing off of Jaguar defenders for a big gain of about 20-ish yards, it looks like, down to about the 25-yard line. First down, Tigers. And the Tigers with that first down now looking to strike one more time for the end of the quarter as we have just hit one minute remaining. Barts down back, quick pass, out left once again to Shannon Tongue, and he picks up uh, about, looks like about five or six, it looks like. And if you notice, East Jessman is really focusing on Shannon now. It's actually gonna be uh, an eight yard gain, look like a, a lot less than that. And TJ, here comes the rain. The rain is coming down here at Garnus Martin. And this is why we have the tent upstairs, protect the equipment up there. <laughs> That's right. Clark drops back, throws a deep ball. Perfect throw. Oh, nearly. It looked like it hit him right in the hands and he drops it. Man, it looks like he was getting a bear hug by his defender. And my wonderful wife brings me the famous Garnus Martin pork chop sandwich up here. I'll make sure I mute the mic as I partake in this wonderful sandwich. Make sure you come out to Gardner's Martin Field, get your pork chop sandwich, and support the Tiger baseball team. I can go ahead and tell you now, I'm going to be grabbing one of those at halftime. Third down, handoff right up the middle. Ty Ty Williams <laughs> that is for a touchdown, Tiger. Ty Ty Williams. 20 yards on the scamper. Tata with a strong run right up the middle. Bounces off a couple of defenders. Makes his way into the end zone. That's Tigers gonna are getting ready to prepare for this two-point conversion as they missed on the last one. Yeah, if they can make it here, it'll be like nothing ever happened last time. They just did two extra points. <laughs> and we've got a flag on the play. Now it's going to be nearly an entire first down attempt to try to get that two point conversion in as they're going to be pushed back to the eight yard line due to a substitution penalty. Coach Clark will go back to the drawing board. Switch up the play. Ty Ty Williams in the backfield. Two receivers out both sides. It's gonna be a throw to the back right hand corner and once again, hits his receiver right in the hands and unable to complete it. Usually trustworthy, Braden Clark couldn't haul it in this time. And your Tigers lead 12 to zero with 32 seconds left in this first quarter. We'll be right back.
Tigers prepare to kick the football off. Once again, leading 12-0. 32 seconds left in the first quarter. And there we go. Short kick down to the 30. Picked up, brought out to about the 36-yard line before he is dropped. And the Tiger defense will take the field, looking to get the ball back. With this rain coming down, TJ, you know, it, it changes the game for uh, both the offense and defense, but particularly the offense as that football becomes a little bit more difficult to hold on to. Yeah, you ever tried to catch pigskin when it's soaking wet? <laughs> And here we go. He's just been out of the shotgun. Handoff number seven, round the side. And he's hit at a, for about a two yard gain and dropped. Jackson and it will be second and eight. And that will be the end of the first quarter. And that will do it. Tigers lead 12 to 0. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back here at Gardner Smart Field. Here we go to start the second quarter. East Jessman with the football. And it's a little shovel pass right up to number nine. He's looking for running room. Finds a little bit off the right-hand side. Number nine, Chance and Jackson. He's going to get a gain of about three or four. Pass up four. About three. You can tell those offensive linebackers in the back is really helping him get some extra guard ground there. As what would have been a three, four yard rush, as he said, actually turned into an eight yard rush. Third and two. Quarterback out of the shotgun, run around the right hand side and he is hit immediately by a great form tackle. Number seven, who else? Ty Ty Williams. And not, not able to get anything going right there as the Tigers shut him down immediately. That's going to set up fourth down for East Jessman. That makes you wonder what Jaguars going to try to do. They're going to try to get that fourth down conversion, or they're just going to hope Bargetown cannot strike again. Don't see the punting unit coming out on the field, so it looks like East Jessman may take their chances here. Uh, working their way to approximately midfield, uh, but still on their side. And and they're going to roll the dice yeah. here. And if you look at pick up this fourth down and short. If you look at the yardage, it looks like they were able to get forward progress on that rush, so there was no loss on the play. And the Tigers' defense stands strong. It looked like he was going to break the tackle. But not until three or four more Tigers came over to help. And they wrestle number seven of the Jaguars to the ground for a fourth down turnover. And what that now means is Bardstown now has possession 
in East Jessman territory, so looks like they've got all the advantage here again. So let's see how East Jessman can respond to this. Clark out of the shotgun, trips right, throws it out to TJ Greenwell of the screen pass. And TJ is going to pick up about eight, it looks like. The ball was screened down to the Jaguar 40. Third and seven. Once again, trips out to the right. Clark talking to the receivers out wide. Looks like Jessman's going to bring some heat up the middle. And he and Clark realizes it and throws a quick pass right across the middle of the slant pattern. Or short, skinny post, it looked like. That was about a 17-yard gain as they're going to take over at their, at their 30 or 25-yard no, line, excuse me. Baby Shannon Tongue with the reception there. I'll tell you what, if Tongue puts his hands on the ball, yeah, you better get him to the ground or else he's gone. Well, we'll have to wait just a second to see what they're able to do here as Bardstown will call a timeout. A greatest chance to, for another little second quarter trivia question. <laughs> Tiger Trivia Night still continuing on here at Garnish Martin Field. And Mr. Floyd, our announcer, he just asked the question. Brady Clark has thrown many touchdowns in his tenure here at Barstown High School. But who was the first person that he threw a touchdown to? And who was the team that we were, who was the opponent? I can remember the opponent, but not, the, not who he threw it to. Even then, I couldn't participate. <laughs> Brady out of the shotgun. He's throwing it deep, and he's got a man wide open. T.J. Greenwell in the corner of the end zone, bobbles it, and incomplete. Oh, ooh, I don't know about that, but can't challenge the zebras out there, as you call them. Once again, another perfect throw right in his receiver's hands, and the Tigers are just they're letting down Brady tonight. Clark out of the shotgun, hands the ball off to Ty Ty Williams, right up the middle. A great run before he is. Pot puts his head down. If you hit that young man hard, you're going to know it. I think Williams on the carry picks up five yards. Ty Ty, not huge in stature, but what he doesn't have in stature, he makes up in strength and power. Yeah, and especially with the speed category as well, you cannot forget that. Third and five now for the Tigers. Clark, hands off, ball to the jet sweep, and there's penetration right up the middle. And the East Jessman defense is able to bring down T.J. Greenwell for a loss of a yard. So now that makes you wonder what the Tigers going to think about doing. They're going to try to get that fourth down conversion. It looks like everyone is still out there. Tigers with a 12 nothing lead. And it looks like the officials are going to take the time out here. Uh, as Baby Tata, they're looking at Baby Tata, or I'm sorry, Tata. Thinking that maybe he had a little blood on him, I think. But after looking at him, he's good. We'll resume playing. Even if he did, I know he would not want to come out of the game. He just says, battle wounds, let me go. Clark drops back, throws the ball across the middle, and it is a touchdown! You can't deny that one. That one is good. Great throw, great catch, and slippery. 
Shannon Tongue, baby Shannon Tongue, with the touchdown. Put the Tigers up 20 to 0. 23 yards on the scoring touchdown. And they'll mark that down as a 23 yard touchdown pass. Now it's looking like they're going to go for the extra point this time as I can see senior Lamarck VC coming out there. And this extra point attempt is Mark interesting on only because during pregame we were watching uh, the Barstow Tigers have a couple of new players that they've added to their squad. And that is the kick is up and it is good. No good. Or is it good? It's good. It's, it's good. good. It's good. It's good. Ain't no worries. We got it. <laughs> 19, 19, nothing. Put them up. 19, nothing. But yeah, Barstown's got a couple of new uh, kickers out there on the field, and one of them had long blonde hair. And, and let's just say she was on the girls' soccer team just a couple weeks ago. That's right. Interesting. Miss Caden Walls is suited up for the Barstown Tigers out there, and I'm not really sure about the history of that. How many times the Barstown Tigers have had a female suit up, but it's great to see it. And I'm going to tell you what, TJ, she can straight get a foot on the football. They said the other day at during practice she kicked a 40-yard field goal. Impressive. I mean, we saw it during warm-up. She hit a 30-yarder like it was nothing. She had room to spare. Impressive for She, she nearly anybody. hit the bleachers outside the track. Any kicker, any kicker, but very impressive for that young lady. Great job, Caden. Proud of your, uh, your confidence to come out here and also – Mad respect for your, your athletic ability. Yeah, and she would be suiting up tonight, but due to a KHAA rule, so you have to have eight suited up practices, and tonight she has only had three so far. So by the playoffs next week, we will get to experience Gaines Walls out in the field. Awesome. Good deal. Tigers kick the football off, and it's picked up about the 25-yard line, and not much gain there, about 26. Upended by Miller O'Daniel. A tackle there by uh, Miller O'Daniel. And let's see. We think we've got a winner to our trivia question. Let's see. She's coming up to the window. I know the team, but not the player, so let's Once see if they can get it. The question is, is Brady Clark's first touchdown pass was to who and against who? East Jessman drops back, throws the ball across the middle. It is complete for about a five-yard gain. And we got a winner! And we have a winner! Yes, indeed. The answer to the question was Spencer County as the opponent and Montrez as the player. Montrez, absolutely. Brings back some memories right there. Drops back, throws it across, uh, I'm sorry, to the sideline, complete. It will be short, though, but what appears to be about two yards. And as you can see, the Shannon Tug fan club are in full force right now. <laughs> she just won her some uh, some candy off of that uh, trivia question. All right, quarterback takes the ball out of the shotgun, runs it up the middle, and it's going to be enough for the Jaguar first down. First and ten, East Jasmine. Once again, 19 to nothing. Seven minutes to go in the first half. Tigers have managed this game pretty well. Uh, offensive production, uh, especially on the ground, hasn't been as much as what we've seen uh, many games. But uh, again, they, they've got a comfortable 19-0 lead. And he is empty backfield, wide, out, wide outs everywhere. And there's a crossing pattern that was thrown a little bit behind him. Hit him in his hands and was unable to pull it in, number 12. As my dad would say, too much mustard on that dog. Could not get the catch there. Second and 10. He's going to 
bring up second and ten. And I think, like you're saying, because of that catch, it's, make, it's being – or not catch, excuse me, incompletion. It's being made even more evident about how much the rain is playing an effect at this game right now. Because that ball bouncing around out of there like a hot potato. Once again, em empty backfield. Three out right, two left. Going back. Throws it short. And he's going to run for about a six-yard gain before he's pushed out of bounds at about the 46-yard line. So that'll be a third and three, it appears, set up. 47-yard line, third and three. Parker Morton calls in the pass from high on the flat, carries it for a gain of seven. Knocked out of bounds by Williams, third and three for Jaguars. Folks, you're going to want to make sure you stay, uh, stay around for our halftime performance. We've got Dance Pro Studio here at Garner Spartan Field, and uh, you're in for a treat. You're talking about an outstanding group of, of young ladies and young men. You need to make sure you check out Dance Pro Studios if uh, – your young one needs a, a good activity to do and has a little bit of rhythm or maybe doesn't have a little bit of rhythm and you'd like to build some for them, you need to make sure you check out Dance Pro Studios. Sorry to interrupt the advertisement, but currently right now East Jessman has taken a timeout. That will be their second of the half. We have one left, so yeah. Be a short break in the action. And we just got a report in the first quarter. Glasgow is playing Franklin Simpson. Glasgow is uh, another powerhouse in, uh, in 3A. And they're playing Franklin Simpson, a team that Bartstown, the Bartstown Tigers played for the first game of the year. And right now, Glasgow is leading 7-0 in the first quarter. Yeah, Tigers are needing a bit of help there. Hoping back. to get better. Throws it up the middle. Incomplete. And that would have been enough for a first down. Uh, instead, fourth and three. Yeah, Bardstown, back to what you were saying about the Glasgow game. They are going to need some help there as, well, they can pass up Glasgow seating-wise. Absolutely. Uh, a really unfortunate loss for Glasgow, I heard, that they uh, lost their – uh, I think it was their second leading rusher last week. Yeah, they did. Uh, they ran the whole offense through him. Open. Oh, there is a flag on the play, I believe. There's a flag on the play, and it's going to be offsides. And I think it was against number seven, Ty Ty Williams, as he lined up out on a wide receiver and uh, with his back turned to the, towards the ball and was unable to see where he was stepping and they caught him for offsides. A costly penalty as it, it gives the Jaguars the first down. And once again with those penalties, as I've made a common factor here. Yes, penalty yards uh, per game. Tigers with 49.3, averaging 49.3 a game. And their opponents, 46.9. So not much of a difference, but more. And you don't want to be on that side of it. You, you much prefer being on the other. Quarterback drops back. He's going to throw it again, and it's picked, and it's off. picked off. There and you he's go. off. And he is running. Who is it? I don't know. Whoever it is, he's, he's brought down him. inside the five. Huge play for Bardstown there as they get the pick. Great play. It's 26 out there. That pass is and Ethan it is Pointer. Ethan Pointer, great interception by that young man. I didn't know he could move like that. He came out of nowhere. Like an assassin in the night, strike first, strike hard. And now it will be Tiger ball first and goal. And they let Mr. Pointer come back into the game. He's lined up. Let's see if they give him the ball, see if he can't finish off what he tried, what he started here.
first and goal. Pointer behind Clark. And here you go. They're going to give him the opportunity. And he's going to put his he's head down. Do Barrel in for the touchdown. Tiger. That drive has been brought to you by the Ethan Pointer Show right there. Touchdown, Tigers. Coach Clark a, Clark, a little tip of the hat to Mr. Pointer. He said, young man, you've worked your way all the way down to about the five-yard line. Let's see if you can punch it in, finish the job. And he answered the call, Mr. Pointer. Congratulations. Tiger's going to go for the extra point here. Here's a snap. And snaps up. And the kick is blocked. No good. And your score remains so your score remains 25 to zero, with a little under five minutes to go in the first half. And this break is brought to you by Path to Pro Business. And the reason why we put this up here is because Mr. T.J. Carr, our student. Uh, Intern broadcaster up here with us as part of the Path to Pro Business program. And we've got two other students up here that are running cameras. Um, exciting things happening with Bartstown Tigers and the Path to Pro program. Uh, we're putting their skills to work. TJ, you're doing an excellent job, man. Proud of you. Uh, TJ is also, once again, an intern at PLG 13. And they give him mad props there. Intern no more. Officially been hired on a few weeks oh, ago. Oh, that's right. You're, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm an official employee that. now. Making money for those skills. <laughs> Once again, Path to Pro Business. Make sure you check it out if uh, your son or daughter uh, is going to be attending Barstown High School. Check out all the academic program that we have to offer. Oh, and there is a flag on the kickoff. Tigers. And it will be against Bardstown. Sides on the Tigers, so be a re kick this time from the 35 yard line. <laughs> and here comes the kickoff. It's a very short kick, fielded at about the 38 yard line. Runs straight ahead into the wall of defenders, and he'll only make it to a uh, little short of the 45-yard line. It looks like 44-yard line. Oh, but it looks like we may have a bit of an injured tiger out there, number 31, limping around out there, That's trying to walk it off. That's senior Shiro Williams. It looks like he's going to shake it off. And you always know whenever you see someone of that caliber clutching any part of their body for a kind of injury, you always get a bit worried there. So the Jaguars have stuck with this uh, empty backfield set for last series, and they're going to start this series with the same. It's had mixed results for him. Oh, it's a botch and it's snap. It appears. Snap. And Bardstown trying to get Ball. on it. Waiting for a recovery sign. Tigers are saying they have it. Let's see what the, what's what the boys in black and white say. What's going to be the official call? And it's going and to be a Bartstown ball. Bartstown, another turnover. That's three, turn four, I'm sorry, four turnovers of this game. East Jessamine looked to try to pull off a trick play, but the snap bounced off the runner's leg and just kind of rolled around on the field out there. No one could get a hand on it. It's slippery. You know, the rain stopped for a second out here at Garnis Martin, and then it started to come right down back. again. Had someone in Chicago warn me this was happening earlier. Should have listened. So Tigers have forced more fumbles uh, from their opponents. They've got eight on the year. The Tigers have only given up six. Make that nine now on the year. Clark out of the shotgun. Motion around to the right-hand side. Fakes the jet sweep left. And he throws across the middle. And again, goes right into his uh, receiver's hands, but he drops it. But a flag does come down, and it looks like it's going to be maybe uh, 
Unnecessary roughness penalty, maybe. Stripes are talking about it a little bit. That is going to be targeting. Wow. Targeting a penalty of uh, uh, some controversy, but uh, has, has definitely been given a lot of emphasis on all levels of football. Yeah, especially in the NCAA. I'm sure anyone and who's will seen. give the Tigers a first down and 10 here. Clark has trips right out of the shotgun, one back set. And he's going to throw a quick pass out to the right to Braden Clark. Makes a move, a couple of moves, cuts it back upfield for some extra yardage, and he's tackled for a tough five or six yard gain. Braden with a great move there to avoid getting brought down. Able to squeeze out maybe two or three extra yards from that. Maybe not the most outright fast, but he's pretty daggone shifty out there when he gets the ball in his hands. He just yeah. knows how to play the game. Yeah, he is one of the more elusive people you will get out there on that field. Brady gets the ball, drops back, looks at the short pass to swing pass to number seven, Ty Ty Williams. Williams. And he's going to make his way out to about a yard short of the first down. And it's going to be about third and a yard or less, call it. TJ, a very, very tough catch there. You know, you're running full speed out of the backfield. You have to turn across the shoulder, and it's got to be a, a well-placed ball to make it as easy of a catch, as though it probably is never easy. Uh, but it looks like they've done that a couple times. Yeah, I agree. You got trips right, and the ball right up the middle, penetration right up oh, the middle. Oh, and he's Once brought again, down he quick. Dropped. He is dropped. That'll be a loss, and that's going to set up fourth down now for the Tigers. The theme of the, of the Bardstown offense tonight outside I think of uh, some, some dropped passes has been uh, the penetration up the middle. It seems like uh, the Jaguars defense has, has made some holes in that offensive line for the Tigers. I'd say we're gonna have to clean up. I'd say that and the ability to add points after touchdowns. <laughs> Trips right, one left, drops back, quick throw. And it's caught, Ty Ty Williams, and he's in for the Tiger and touchdown. And it is, yes. Williams for a Tiger touchdown. Covered by a defender, shakes off the tackle, and after that, it's all she wrote. Ty Ty Williams into the end zone. Putting the score at 31 to nothing. So it'll be interesting to see what they go for. If Lamarck comes out there and they go for the extra point, then the game will continue as normal. But if they go for two and get it, then that 33-point rule from the KHSAA will kick in. Excuse me, I stand corrected. There is actually 36. My fault there. <laughs> 36 points. The clock will continue oh. to run. Calling a touchdown. They're calling it a touchdown. Which they've already called. I'm uh, I was not real sure what was going on there. I thought that was pretty definitive that he was able to get into the end zone there. I don't really know what they were looking at, but no matter, two-point conversion attempt coming on the way for the Tigers now. Clark under center here. And he's going to hand it up the middle to Tata, and he is going to walk into the end zone untouched after a little counter play, it looked like. That was really just a cruise into the end zone. He's going to put the score at your Tigers, 33, and the East Jessamine Jaguars, zero. Two minutes and 21 seconds left in the first half. We'll take a short break and be right back here at Gardner Smart Field.
And folks, the rain is coming down heavy here at Tiger Stadium. Let's hope these let's hope these fans and players are fine with a second shower because it is pouring out there. And a little onside give. And not sure if that was intentional or not, or you know, if the rain caused it or what, but regardless, uh, the Jaguars recover the football and they'll take the ball over in good field position. As you're saying, to put some I would points on the board before the half here. I would probably blame the rain on that one. The crowd now showing some love for the cheerleaders now being forced to stand out in that rain. So now here's the first. Cocker back to throw. He will throw it out of bounds. Second and 10 now for East Jessamine. The Jaguars finally looking to hopefully make some ground up here on the Tigers, as they have just been slobber knockered here tonight. So we are about to hit two minutes left in the quarter. Now here's the snap. Quarterback dropping back, and that's a heave downfield. And, and it's, intercepted. it's intercepted. Are you kidding? Great play. Barnstown with another pick. What a play out there. What a wonderful play. Oh, my gosh. Baby Shannon Tongue backpedaling, backpedaling. Falling down and still catching the football and holding on. And not to mention in this Tiger downpour turnover. as well. Absolutely. Unbelievable. Oh, my goodness. Great play. Great play. Again, fifth turnover forced by the Tiger defense tonight. And Clark makes his way back and onto the field. The dance pros will not be performing at halftime, and I don't blame them. Oh. Well, it looks like that advertisement from earlier is now going to go also for naught. <laughs> yes, uh, just got word that unfortunately the dance pros will not be performing as they are concerned about uh, getting injured on this slick conditions and, and, and completely understandable. We yeah, I mean, it, those young it is a safe. torrential downpour out there right now. You know, my daughter is fortunate enough to be a part of the dance pros, and I've seen them, and they dance. They dance hard. There's all kinds of tricks and moves, and without cleats on, yeah, I, I wouldn't risk it either. Yeah. And there was actually a, a flag while we were reviewing the dance pro thing, and now it will be first and 15 from Bardstown. High snap to Clark. He hands the ball up to Ty Ty Williams, and he is tackled after a gain of about six or seven. And it's going to be second and seven. Clark, two left, one right. Motion to the right side. Fakes the handoff to Greenwell and then dumps it off to him. But the, once again, all kinds of Jaguar defenders in the backfield. And yeah, TJ made a good move to try and turn – like, to, just to try to get anything out of that. Um, just got swarmed up by these Jessamine Jaguars, and now that's going to end up turning into a second down now. Oh, another flag. And a face mask against the Jaguars. Jaguars once again shooting themselves in the foot. We're going to redo second down. It's going to be second, and we'll call it 10 still. Tigers get set. Trips right, one to the left. One on the backfield with Brady as well. It's a fake handoff up the middle, and Brady steps up in the pocket and looks, composes himself, and it's complete to number eight, T.J. Greenwell. And he tries to make a move, but it steps out of bounds, but it's not until after he gains about 15 yards. That'll be just side of the 40-yard line. And it's good enough for a Tiger first down. You know, 
Greenwell uh, really hasn't got a lot going here uh, in this game. Uh, not sure if the Jaguar defense really keyed on them, but uh, any swing pass or run out of the backfield, he hasn't had a, a lot of luck. I'm sure he'll get going. You can't keep him caged for long. Yeah, T.J. Greenwell, he's one of those special players. He, he always finds a way to get on you. Close trips right. Swing pass out to the right side. Hit. And it is dropped. Dropped. Once again, looks like that ball is very slick. It was even nearly picked by East Jessamine as it was knocked right to a defender. He just couldn't get his hands on it either. Intended for Tata Williams. Kind of bounced right off of him, and he's wiping his hands off as if saying, man, it's wet. And if you notice, number 23 out on the defense, he has been guarding Williams like a hawk out there. Trips right. Single back in the backfield. Brady drops back. It's going to be a throw. Looking, looking. Throws it across the middle. And it's incomplete it as well. Into traffic, tries to get it to Brayden Clark. Incomplete. And it's going to bring up third and 10. The clock has stopped. 51 seconds to go in the first half. Tigers lead 33-0. to zero. We are just shy of halftime, which I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Bardstown will receive second-half kickoff. That's right. So they're looking to just pad on even more before they get another shot at it next quarter. Once again, trips right. Brady looks for the quick pass out to T.J. Green. And Greenwell he could, makes the he's grab. He's completed this time, and he about breaks free. Um, thought that was going to maybe go to the house there, but a shoestring tackle. He was and just a bit short of that. Oh, no. Oh, there's a flag on the play. another flag, and it is going to be personal foul, it looks like, against. I think it was against East Jessup. Let's see what they're going to. be against the East Jessup. Let's see what they rule. Number 39 seemed to have some extra words to say to the. Tiger offense and yep that will be so it's sportsmanlike on East Jessman. Signal is unsportsmanlike conduct against East Jessman. Yeah. And another big pickup for the Tigers there as East Jessman they're struggling with the penalties just as much as Bardstown. If not more. And another flag, wow. Archdown's gonna give five yards back to East Jessamine here after the false start penalty. They are dumping laundry all over the field right now. Lance, I mean, this is, this is insane. It's gonna be 40 seconds to go in the half. Clock is running. Brady throws it out to the, to the side. And Greenwell brought down quick there by East Jessamine. 30 seconds and the going to be a timeout called by Bartstown. Stop Bar the clock here. Bartstown looking to stop that clock, trying to get at least one more score before the half. One timeout each. After the timeout, Tigers come out. Snap. 
Clark's going to throw it quick. Completed. He will get out of bounds to stop the clock. That will be stopped at 27 seconds. Completed to number four once again. Oh, there's a flag on the play. So there are actually multiple, excuse me. The refs are now going to be meeting up. Do we have, I think. I believe that might have been another targeting. I think it might be. I think it's an unsportsmanlike conduct, and uh, we may have an ejection here, TJ. I think you may be. You, I think you're right. Yeah, excuse me, it's not a targeting. Because number 64, he stormed off the field in a fit of rage. So I believe you are right in that. We're going to get the call. It's a dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct. Against, against Jessamyn. East Jessamyn. Oh, it's two it's unsportsmanlike. Two. And he's been ejected. And he has been It's ejected. two on the same player. Number 64. Been ejected from the game as now Bardstown will not only get a big extension, but East Jessamyn, they're going to be a man down right now. Of bringing someone in for him. Two 15-yard penalties. You don't see that very often, so a 30-yard penalty puts the Tigers down the first and all ten the from the way 13. down to the – is it going to be the 13? Yes, it is the 13. 13-yard yeah, line with 27 seconds left. This is exactly what Bardstown wanted because they even stopped the clock as well with getting out of bounds. Yeah, the East Jessamyn coach cannot be happy right now. I can tell you that for sure. Here we go. Brady fakes the sweep, moves around in the pocket, completes it. A great move up the middle. And that's a touchdown Shannon again for Bardstown. And the Tigers hit the scoreboard again with 13 seconds left in the half. There is a flag on the play. Oh, oh, and it's coming back, a holding against the Tigers. No touchdown there. It is still 33 nothing. Shifty little move by baby Shannon Tongue will be all for naught as the Tigers will back it up. They're going to have the ball, get the ball right at about – at the 29-yard line. It's a big pushback. That's going to end up really hurting the Tigers there. Brady steps back, throws the ball, complete. And we're going to see if they call him inbounds or out because he landed on the player, and they're going to call him out of bounds. So that will stop the clock at seven seconds, and Bardstown can hold on to that last timeout. Second down now. You know, you're up 33 to nothing here, and uh, seven seconds to go. It's There's only so many plays that you can run right here. We'll see. Yeah, but you got to figure out one that works, the and there is another flag on the play. This is going to be a false start against the Tigers. We're going to go back five. But what I was saying is, is TJ, is – is there's seven seconds left in this game, and I'm not so sure that Coach Clark is really all about wanting to get in the end zone to extend this score, but he's really just teaching this Tiger. He may just be teaching this Tiger team, hey, we may be in this position in the playoffs. We need to know how to run a two-minute offense. Well, I'd say I'd say they are trying to run up that score because there's one very important factor that I don't really oh. think you're considering right there: RPI. The more points you get, the more RPI you get. And the higher RPI, better seed to get in the playoffs. It's third down now for the Tigers. Here we go. 
two left, two right. Clark drops back. back, throws it to the end Throw. zone. And it is complete. It's caught. Oh, my goodness. They're going to pull it off and get the score. What a dime throw by Clark. And this time there are no flags. It will stand. And we talked about, I believe it was T.J. Greenwell finally getting on the TJ scoreboard. T.J. Greenwell on the scoring hookup from Brady Clark. Just like you said a minute ago, it only was taking a matter of time until T.J. got his moment. And there you go. You can slow him down, but you're not going to stop him. Exactly. There we go. It's looking like they're going for two here. Clark throws it up to the back of the end zone. And it's tipped no good, but it is still a 39-point lead. Your Tigers at halftime lead 39-0. to zero. We wish that we could be bringing to you the Dance Pro Studio performance. But once again, folks, they are uh, going to take the halftime off for precautionary measures to keep their dancers safe as the rain continues to come down here at Garnus Martin Field. We'll be back well, before, shortly. Lance, before you go, I think we should mention that touchdown right there, new school record, Brady Clark. New school record, Brady Clark, most touchdown passes. Congratulations to that young man. I believe he passed John Wesley Munnin for touchdown passes, I believe. Is that correct? Passes John Wesley Munnin. He passes John Wesley Munnin, a 2001 state championship quarterback, also a very uh, – Close friend of mine throughout high school, and uh, what an accomplishment! I know, I know, John Wesley would be uh, proud of Brady for breaking it. So, congratulations, Brady! Yeah, congrats, man! You you definitely deserve this, man. We'll be back here, Garnish Martin Field, shortly. Stay tuned.
All right, sorry about that, folks. We had a little bit of technical difficulties there, but we are right back to the action here in the third quarter. Bardstown leading 39 to nothing. And if you, if, I'm not sure if you're able to see it after that little technical difficulty there, but East Jessamine went for an onside kick. Bardstown was able to recover, and now they are taking over. So that's going to end up now being second and 10 now. Or will it? The refs appear to be meeting. And they're stopping the clock and meeting up now. And okay, everything is okay now. We just had a bit of a clock issue there. Started at 15 minutes instead of 12. Kadian Lydian with the run up the middle. That's going to get him to about the 45 yard line. It appears no gain, no loss. Third down and 10. That'd be third down and 10 now. 